I Got Rhythm Part 6, we looked at a couple of famous songs that feature exciting rhythmic syncopations created by chaining together dotted quarter note accents in 4 4 meter. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3, 4. Namely, the ending of Good Times Roll by the Cars and the chorus to I've Done Everything for You, which was initially written by Sammy Hagar and recorded and then later covered by Rick Springfield. Another well known example, by the way, can be found in the intro to Suffragette City by David Bowie, which goes 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, and 3, 4, and 2, 3, 4. So it's that 1 and 2 and 3 and 4, 1 and 2 and 3, 4. Anyway, I'd now like to show you a dramatic way to keep this dotted quarter syncopation going until it comes full circle and has you landing on beat one again. To demonstrate, I'll simply strum an E7 sharp 9 chord, you know, the Jimi Hendrix chord, every one and a half beats, like this. One, two, three, four, one, two, and three, four, one, and two, three, and four, and one, and two, and 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 three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and one. Looking at the tabs, you'll see that in some places I've broken out or factored the dotted quarter rhythm into an eighth note tied to a quarter note, specifically when crossing over a bar line, so as to abide one of the strictest laws of music notation. I've also done this when crossing from beat two to beat three, for the sake of showing a break in the middle of the measure, which as a music editor I think is very helpful for sight reading. Getting back to the accent pattern, notice how suspenseful, trippy, and floaty it sounds while still being tightly grounded to the underlying eighth note pulse. Controlled chaos, if you will. By the way, many drummers and percussionists love this kind of sophisticated tension building rhythmic motif. I'll play it for you again. Two, three, four. And I'll do it with a full drum beat. I'm using my foot drums here. Two, three, four. One, two, An alternative way to convey the pattern that can be equally appealing and perhaps more useful in certain musical situations would be to play each chord staccato with a hole of silence after it. To demonstrate, I'll play that same figure again, figure one, with the E7 sharp 9 chord. This time I'll loosen my fret hand grip on the strings immediately after each strum so that the chord stops ringing, like this. One, two, three, four. One and two and three and four and 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 one. Yet another approach would be to employ the highly popular and widely used rhythm within a rhythm scheme that we looked at in the previous lesson, for which I decided the intro to Stacy's Mom by Fountains of Wayne and the arpeggiated ending to Good Times Roll by the Cars as examples. If you recall the Stacy's Mom example, we went. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. So those are steady eighth notes, right? And then the Good Times Roll, we went. Referring back to my original example with the E7 sharp 9 chord again, I'll now demonstrate how this approach with the rhythm within a rhythm can be applied to our dotted quarter accent chain, this time with the open low E string filling in every eighth note between the chord hits or stabs, which as you'll see in here fall on every third eighth note. And for added contrast and bite here, I'm going to strum the chords with upstrokes and then hit the low E notes with palm muted downstrokes, which separates them effectively in terms of the attack. One, two, three, four. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and four. Notice the nice contrast created by the chugging on the palm muted low E notes. So what we have now is an implied dotted quarter rhythm via an accent pattern that's built into a continuous stream of eighth notes, which is a very drummer-like thing to do. 
By the way, and I think this is a very worthwhile point to make and demonstrate, you can sculpt two additional and cool sounding phrasing variations from this pattern by eliminating either the first or second eighth note after each chord strum or stab. For example, if I replace the first low E note with a rest, we get this cool sounding pattern. Two, three, four. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three. And if instead I replace the second low E note with a rest, we get this different and equally catchy pattern. One, two, three, four. It's also worth noting here that when you play this revolving accent pattern in 4 4, including all the variations on it that I just showed you, it takes three bars to come full circle and resolve back to beat one. I had learned the pattern back in music school and at the time found it very challenging and tricky to play while keeping track of the beats and bars without getting lost rhythmically. And as always, I found it very helpful to count the beats and subdivisions out loud while tapping my foot squarely on each beat, like a human metronome, as I've been doing here with my kick drum and tambourine. This dotted quarter accent pattern serves as a highly beneficial rhythmic training exercise, as its uneven length, one and one half beats, causes it to shift to every possible metric permutation of eighth notes across a bar four or four, so that at some point, every eighth note is accented. As such, it will help you master eighth note syncopations. Things get even more interesting when you combine this revolving dotted chord of syncopation with chord changes, right? So far, I've just been doing everything with this one chord. I'll now demonstrate an angular ACDC inspired open power chord riff that shows what I'm talking about here. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Thanks for watching. See you next time.